If you want to learn how to sample, this free masterclass will show you everything you need to know to make beats using samples in FL Studio. Today, you're going to learn what the best place is to find samples, the best way to chop them up and turn them into beats in FL Studio. And I'll even show you some of the best tools that will help you sample even better. My name is Navi D. I've been producing for 15 plus years. I've made sample beats that have been used by platinum artists, have been used in video games that sold millions of copies. And so today I will be showing you everything that you need to know to get started with sampling. So let's begin by talking about where you can find good high quality samples to use for your beats. Down below in the description box, I've put together a master list of the top YouTube channels for samples that you can download for absolutely free. This list has more than 100,000 samples in it, and I use this all the time to find samples nowadays. So if you're just trying to learn how to sample and make beats for now, this is going to be a very helpful tool. But if you're thinking of selling beats and you're worried about the legality, I have two recommendations for you. None of this is sponsored, by the way, or anything. I'm just giving my opinion here. Recommendation one is Tracklib. This is a service that gives producers access to samples that they can use legally, and they have a pretty good library of samples. They have songs from the 60s and 70s all the way to modern songs that you can sample. Recommendation two is Splice. This is probably the biggest library of royalty-free samples, many of which have been used in hit songs. However, their samples are mostly made by modern producers, and as a result, many samples can feel formulaic, at least in my opinion. So what samples should you use? It's entirely up to you and whether you're just learning or you're trying to sell beats already and whether you're willing to pay for a service to get samples. Since this video is meant to be educational and we're here to learn, I'll just go with the YouTube option to find a sample that we can use to make a beat, again, for educational purposes. All right, this is the sample I will use. So now let us open up FL Studio and let's begin talking about how to actually sample in FL Studio. Let's begin by first bringing in our sample into our FL Studio playlist by pressing this button up here and dragging in our sample. Now, when it comes to sampling, there are two main ways that you can approach this and which way you take depends on what you want to do with your sample. The first approach you can take is looping. This is when you hear a short phrase or idea inside of a sample that you like and you want it to loop so it plays over and over again. For example, let's say I wanted to make a beat out of this section of the sample here. And I wanted it to loop around and around like this. Here is how I would do this in FL Studio in three simple steps. Step one is to find the BPM of your sample. By default, your FL Studio is probably set to 140 BPM. But the sample is most likely a different BPM than this. So this is the first problem that we must solve. We need to figure out what the sample's BPM is. To do this, we can press on this button up here. This opens up a tempo tapper and we can simply just tap on this big square as you listen to your sample. Basically, just tap along as you nod your head listening to your sample. So it seems our sample's BPM is around 59. Now this might not be exactly perfect, but that's okay. We just need to get close for now. So that is step one done. From here, we move on to step two, which is to separate your loop. So again, this area is the part of our sample we want to loop. So let's zoom in and we will select the slice tool up here and then just try our best to cut the piece that we want from our loop. P.S. Holding down Alt lets you cut within these grid lines to get more accurate. Again, you do not need to be absolutely perfect here. We can adjust later on. For now, let's just focus on trying our best to separate our loop that we want from the rest of the sample. So once you have made your cuts, delete everything else by right clicking. So all you're left with is your loop and you can bring your loop to the very beginning of your playlist. So now let's hit play and listen for what we have. And what we want at this point is for our sample to perfectly loop around. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so as you heard, it sounds like we have a little bit of cleaning up to do. You could hear it didn't loop around perfectly. And the reason why is because I grabbed too much of my sample by looking at this waveform. So this is when you can trim or extend to get your sample to loop around perfectly. And in this case, we need to trim that extra part of my sample at the very end. And to do this, we could use the same slicing tool that we did before, or you can just go to the very end of your sample like so and change its length. A handy little feature inside of FL Studio. Now let's hear what we have. All right, now it is actually looping perfectly, but there is still one problem that we need to fix. Even though this is looping perfectly, when we listen to it, as you can see, it is not on grid. When you are looping a sample, not only is it important to get your sample to loop around perfectly like we just did, but the loop also needs to fit perfectly on grid. That way, when you add your own sounds into your beat after to play along with your sample, everything will actually line up and play on time and it won't sound like a big mess. So why isn't this perfectly on grid, even though it's looping perfectly when we listen to it? Well, if this happens to you, it's probably because you haven't selected the exact right BPM. So one way you can fix this is to try and changing your BPM. As you can see, when we change our BPM, our sample is changing its length. So that's one way that you can get your loop to fit perfectly on grid, or what you can try doing is just stretching what you have. To do that, you will turn a stretch mode on here. And now when you go to the end of your sample, you will no longer be trimming or extending. Instead, it will stretch your sample to fit perfectly into whatever space you want. So that is step two. Now there is one last thing you probably want to do here, which is step three. You will want to adjust your loop. Here's why this is an important step. Let's say for example, I didn't want to make a beat at this slow paced BPM that we have right now. Instead, I want to make a beat at 80 BPM. We'll take a listen to what happens. Even though this beat is at 80 BPM and this loop works perfectly, it has become much more high pitched. And what if we don't want that? Well, this is when adjusting your loop will fix this problem. If you double click on your sample, this will pop up. It will give you a bunch of adjustments that you can make to your sample. You can change the volume or the panning like so. But the most important adjustment here for sampling is the stretching mode. Right now it's set to resample, and if we instead set it to stretch, now it plays back at its regular pitch. From here, once we have stretch mode on, we can even adjust the pitch ourselves and change it to whatever we want using this knob. So with all three steps done, we now have a perfect loop and we can use this to make an actual beat by creating other patterns using other sounds. And adding these patterns to our playlist to play alongside our sample. And then just copying and pasting these patterns in our playlist over and over. Now there is one more cool feature I wanna show you that can unlock a lot of powerful sampling ideas for you. What if there's a piece of your sample or a part that you really like, but it's full of singing or drums that are just getting in the way? Well, this is when you can use stem splitting inside of FL Studio. To do this, just click in the corner of your sample up here and select extract stems from sample. It will give you this prompt to download this feature. Go ahead and press OK. And so what this will do is try its best to separate the sounds from each other inside of your sample. Once you do this, you can use the techniques that I've already showed you to create a loop using the separated piece of your sample that may have been unusable before.
So that is how you loop. But as you know, sampling isn't just only about looping. You've probably seen videos of producers taking samples, chopping them up, and rearranging these chops and building their own ideas with them. So let's talk about how to do this in FL Studio. Now, while you could use what I've shown you already using the slicing tools in the playlist, this is probably the least efficient way of chopping up samples. Luckily, in FL Studio, there are actually two dedicated slicing tools that will help you do this much better. They are Fruity Slicer and SliceX. Now you might be wondering which of these two should you use? Well, here's my recommendation. If you're chopping up a drum loop, Fruity Slicer is perfect. It's a quick and easy tool that will let you get results fast. But if you're chopping up a musical sample like we have, Fruity Slicer can be a pain because it's missing a lot of helpful features. And so that's why I recommend SliceX for chopping up samples like the one that we're using now, and you'll see why soon. So to use this, go ahead and drag your sample into SliceX. And the nice thing about SliceX is it lets you make changes to your sample directly, which Fruity Slicer does not. For example, we can delete everything from our sample that we don't want to use like so. And so now let's talk about how to actually create chops. Well, you can do this manually by bringing your cursor over to wherever you want by double clicking and then hitting this button here. And as you can see, this creates a marker, which is basically a chop. And to play these chops, you would use your keyboard or your piano roll inside of FL Studio. My life Quick side note, if your chops have this annoying popping or clicking sound as you just heard, to fix this, zoom in on wherever your chop is and make sure that it is placed where these lines cross over this horizontal line here. So that's how to add chops manually. But what if you have a long sample? This manual method can take forever. Well, that's why SliceX offers auto chopping. If you right click on this button next to the add chop button, this menu pops up giving you a few different ways to chop up your sample. Now, personally, I don't find these auto chopping features all that great, unfortunately. For example, if I choose dull mode, it gives me one chop. And then if I try the mode that is one up from it, it gives me a million chops. And the next one, infinite chops. This is partly why I prefer using third party tools for chopping, which I can show you later on in this video. But for now, let's just keep going with SliceX since it's free to use in FL Studio and the principles are still important to learn of how to chop. For this sample, let's just select medium grid chopping. I feel like this is an okay amount of chops to deal with. And if you don't like what it's come up with, you can even adjust these chops. Just click on any one of them and you can move them around like so, or right click to delete if you want that as well. And so once you have your chops ready, it becomes a game of piecing together whatever you think sounds good. But before you do that, I would recommend a couple of things. Number one, turn off auto dump. This feature has ruined many beat ideas throughout sampling history and here's how. Let's say you came up with an idea you really like using your chops, but then you slightly wanted to adjust one of these chops like so. Take a look at what happens if auto chop is on. It will automatically erase all of your hard work and replace it with the default chops. Worst of all, I believe there is no undo on this either. So that's why I recommend turning this feature off. Another feature you may want to toy around with is the master pitch. Again, this changes the pitch of your entire sample. So after piecing together all these chops and adding a few of my own sounds, here is what I've made. By the way, if you struggle with putting good chops together, I have a full video on that topic, which I will also link in the description box below. And from here, I would simply just add this pattern to my playlist and build my beat out from here. But there are a couple more ideas in this beat that I want to show you that I haven't yet. And this is when we move on to the recommendations for tools that I believe will help you with sampling. And I want to say none of what I show you is mandatory. All of this is optional. Like we talked about, SliceX is my recommendation for stock FL Studio choppers. But if you want to make sampling even easier, I highly recommend Serato Sample. I believe they even offer you a trial so you can try it out. Once again, this video isn't sponsored or anything, but I just personally love 
love this tool and here's why. First, it doesn't overload you with a zillion chops. Making and adjusting chops is quick and easy. As well, all the sampling features you need are all in one place and accessible. For example, up here we have stem splitting. As well, adjusting your individual chops is much easier. All you have to do is go here and you can change the pitch and the speed of any particular chop you want. Whereas for Slice X, this fader that I showed you up here only adjusts the entirety of the sample. If you wanted to adjust the pitch or speed of just one chop, you have to go into multiple menus and use this far more complicated tool here. So for those reasons, Serato Sample can make sampling much easier and accessible, but there's another part of this beat that I didn't show you yet. As you can see, I actually added my own instruments and ideas into this beat. We have this cool vocal sound as well as this guitar. And adding your own sounds and ideas onto a sample can be one of the most challenging things. It definitely was for me when I first started making beats. And so that's why I actually built a tool that can help you with this called Note Grabber. This is an effect that you would add onto your sample and what it does is it shows you every single note inside of your sample or loop that you built. And it even lets you take exact notes from your sample. You do this by drawing them in and then dragging and dropping them into your piano roll like so. But another way this tool is meant to be helpful is to just let you know what notes you should use for your own patterns. Personally, I don't know music theory even after 15 plus years of making beats. And so the way Note Grabber helps me is that I can easily see what notes exist in my sample. Like here we have a D, an F, an A sharp, and just below it we have an A. And these are the exact notes that I used for my guitar pattern that I just showed you. A D, an F, an A sharp, and an A. And if you download that free list of 100,000 samples that I talked about right next to me, I am throwing in a free trial to Note Grabber. Again, these recommendations are completely optional. It's up to you if you want to use these tools. But overall, that is how you sample in FL Studio. If you found this video, hit like and subscribe. I have tons of more videos on my channel that dive deeper into FL Studio and sampling as well as Slice X, plus many other fun videos on sampling. So if you're down, hopefully I will see you next week when I release another video. But bye for now.